All right, welcome back live. We continue right here on Pittsburgh CW. It's the nightly sports call. Be sure to join us tonight for the number one Cochran Sports Showdown, 1135 over on KDK TV. I'll be joined by Will Graves of the Associated Press, Chris Muller of the Starkey and Muller Show. That comes your way every day, 2 to 6 on 93.7 The Fan. And Colin Dunlap, the morning host of the Fan Morning Show. We have a lot to get into, a lot of hot topics, a lot of hot takes for you tonight at 1135. By the way, before I go to the lines, just a couple of other items of business. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, I don't know if you saw that New England game today. They won, made it look easy, as I said. By the way, they won 14 consecutive road games now. But Gronk should be suspended for what he did today to Trey Wilson late in the game. Uh, an interception by Wilson of Buffalo. He was laying just flat on his stomach, clearly down. And for whatever reason, Gronkowski went after him and landed on him with a heavy forearm to the head. He sustained a concussion. Now, if that's anyone else who has a big history, uh, people are calling for his ouster of the game, uh, Vontez Burfik, for example. If you saw it from him, you'd expect it, but you also knew that it should be dealt with severely. Same holds true here. I think Gronkowski should be suspended. I think they should be heavy-handed with it. It was unnecessary. It caused an injury in an era of watching for CPT. That's, or CTE, I'm sorry. That's the kind of stuff that you want to get out of the game, and he should be suspended. One other note, Alabama, we talked about this last, last night on the sports call. I thought they would be the choice over Ohio State. Urban Meyer seemed not to have a problem with it, and why not? He was the beneficiary of this kind of thinking last year when Ohio State got to the Final Four. So Alabama is number four, takes on Clemson in one of the national semifinals. The other one will have Georgia against Oklahoma, and that comes up on New Year's Day. Line one we go. It's Mark in the North Hills. What's up, Mark? How you doing? <laughs> Great show. Um, just a real quick thing uh, about when you were talking about John McKay, the greatest quote I thought he said was uh, they asked him, how are you going to make the playoffs? And he said, we need three or four plane crashes. That was pretty bad. bad. He, said, he said a lot of interesting stuff, but you remember they went 0-16 that year. And, you know, at that point people were saying, what in the world are you doing here? You left Southern Cal, I think he was at. He had one of the most cushy jobs you can have in college football where – Every year he had to worry about which Heisman candidate would carry the ball next. And then here he was, he took that expansion job, and they had all sorts of problems. But Cleveland has surpassed that. Let's go to Al in the West End. Hello, Al. How you doing? Hey, Bob. How you doing? Good, thanks. Before I make my Steeler comment, I am so glad Alabama got in because Ohio State got in. You're going to need to hire Bob Muller to do an investigation after having happened to Penn State last year. So I'm glad they did it. Yeah, they sort of got a taste of their own medicine. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, did you see what Tom Brady did today to his coach? Yes, and if that were uh, Ben and Haley, we'd have four days' worth of nonstop calls. I'm going to go even further than that. If that had been Antonio Brown or Martavis Bryant, Bob, I'm going to go there. It's a double standard when it comes to black players and white players. It's, it's obvious. It's there. And Antonio Brown had that cooler thing. Oh, right. I, my goodness, he was crucified. Brady does it. Oh, it's just football. It's always been that way. The double standard between black and white players is unfortunate. That goes on in 2017. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And in terms of, uh, you know, if Antonio hears that kind of criticism, which he accurately, as you said, did, you know, Brady's looked at, oh, he's won five Super Bowls. He can do whatever he wants, and he's, uh, he's great for doing it. But uh, there's always a double standard in sports. Uh, comment there, and thank you for that. Uh, let's go to Kevin and Jeanette. Hey, Kevin. Good. How are you, Bob? I'm fine, thanks. I would just like to know your opinion on Gronkowski's late, late hit yeah. off the sidelines. Obviously, the player is down. He throws his elbow into him. Right. It was a WWE ran. move. Yes. Right. And he hit him right and, in the head. Uh, even though Suspension. Native, I don't. You know, I, what's going to happen to him? Because he is a New England Patriot. He will be suspension, uh, suspended. And if he isn't, then the NFL is full of crap because they would do well, that to anyone else. And just because it's Rob Gronkowski, he deserves the same fate. He should be suspended. Is that going to come into effect after they play the Steelers or you know, before I, they play? I have no idea. And if it does, regardless, I, you know, to me, I don't look at it that way. I know a lot of people out there want him to miss the Steelers. But uh, if it happens, it should happen this week, which would make him, and it depends on the, the length of it. I guess it would be a one-game suspension. That's what you'll most likely see. We saw two games last week with that fight with Michael Crabtree, remember that, and Tlaib. Uh, Absolutely. So I think, you know, who knows? He, he, he caused an injury. The guy has a concussion. Therefore, he might get a couple of games. So we'll see. I, I believe he should also be fined by He will. NFL. He will. 
And you not you don't often. Thanks for the call, man. You don't often hear Bill Belichick apologize for the actions of one of his players, but he did today after the game. That should tell you everything you need to know. Let's go out to uh, Big Will in Monroeville. Will, what's up? Hey, Bob. How are you tonight? Good, thanks. Good. Listen, you want to talk Pirates. Uh, you know, I've had season tickets, as you know, for many years, mm-hmm. and I wasn't sure if I was going to renew them this year or not. And I got a funny phone call Wednesday, and it was actually Frank Coonley asking me what needs to happen for me to renew. And I actually said, well, you spend money, I'll spend money. <laughs> Well, listen. And that was a live, live phone call. He said he was calling a lot of season ticket holders that hadn't renewed yet. What are you going to do? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah, but I mean, you're not going to see the effects of anything right now this year. So I still think if you like baseball and if you like getting out there, you know, listen, we all reside in Pittsburgh. Those of us who cover this team, you want to see them do well. Uh, sure. But you also don't want to hide any criticism. I've been very critical of their spending habits. Right. and. And I'd still love to see them do well because what we saw in the magical years of 13, 14, those were great moments. And it's been long overdue here in Pittsburgh. But if you're going to do it in a non salary cap league and you support the system that does not have a salary cap, then you better willingly spend money to make your team better. And if you don't, you're going to be criticized. There are, you know, you can take whatever revenue sharing you want, you can do whatever you want to pocket whatever money you want. That's your right as an ownership. But you also owe it to the fan base and to the people of Pittsburgh to go out and try to do your best. It's just the way it is, and it's a choice. Right. It's a system that you I, endorse, I so therefore, if you like it, you got to play by the rules of it. All right, man, thanks. Appreciate right. it. Ari, right, it's good to talk to you. Well, let's go to Eric in Penn Hills. What's up, Eric? How you doing? Hey, Bob. Hey, your daughter's beautiful. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, she takes after her mother, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was wondering about uh, Mark Andre Furry, uh, his status. Yeah, he's still not playing. You know, it's funny. It's been a long time. They've gone through five goaltenders there, Eric, and uh, he's still not back. Now, Mal- Subban, Malcolm Subban, who was out, came back. He's now in goal. They went through a lot of different kids, uh, including a 19 year old kid that they brought in. And I was surprised they let him play, but he did okay a couple of games. But hopefully Flurry will be back. The Penguins are going to go out there pretty soon. So you'd like to be out there when they're, you know, you'd like to see him when he gets out there. So appreciate it. Thanks very much for the call. Let's go to a break. We have Ron in Aliquippa. We have Pete in Hampton. We'll get to your questions next, guys, right here live on Pittsburgh CW. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. 